is that Christianity began as a Jewish apocalyptic sect who started worshipping a celestial god figure called Jesus, probably during the first century BC. Key to apocalypticism was that this momentous event was going to be in the near future. This Jesus developed an anthropomorphised narrative where he was conceived by God and a heavenly woman and born in the spirit realm. Then later he was crucified as a sacrifice for the sins of the earth, resurrected and elevated to a high-ranking position in the heavenly hierarchy. These events occurred in the distant past and Jesus had been the resurrected ruling son of God throughout human history. Then, around the year 70, in the turmoil of the Judeo-Roman War, the anthropomorphization process took another step. Mark wrote a gospel which gave Jesus an earthly existence, which he placed in Jerusalem and Galilee 40 years prior. Anyway, once he had done this, the idea took off rapidly for two reasons. One is that a personal saviour who had been on earth, lived, suffered and died with us had more appeal than fantastical imaginings about events in outer space. With a few exceptions that got through the heretical screen, on the one hand because they had the desirable characteristic of being ancient, and on the other they were not obviously heretical because they did not overtly contradict the historicist narrative. Paul travelled around the Eastern Roman Empire, preaching, founding churches and developing the same celestial backstory for Jesus that the mythicists hold was the theology of the first Christians starting decades previously. Both Jesus and Paul were apocalyptic preachers, prophesying the imminent arrival of God's forces on earth to overthrow the powers of evil. And the mythicist theory exists because Paul doesn't say what historicity expects him to say. He makes no reference to earthly deeds or sayings of Jesus but he does make a handful of infuriatingly non-specific statements about Jesus that can be interpreted either way. He says in Galatians that Jesus was born of a woman, born under the law, which again sounds earthly, but he uses a Greek word for born that could mean created in heaven. So now turning to Revelation, was he born of a woman on earth or born of a woman in heaven? Was he crucified by Pilate in Judea, or by evil demons in outer space? It does mention these things, but it says nothing of Jesus' sibship. Chapter 12 has a possible clue about Paul's born of a woman statement. Then a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, and with the moon under her feet, and on her head was a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and screaming in labour pain, struggling to give birth. A huge red dragon that had seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadem crowns. Now the dragon's tail swept away a third of the stars in heaven, and hurled them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that he might devour the child as soon as it was born. So the woman gave birth to a son, a male child, who is going to rule over all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was suddenly caught up to God and to his throne, and she fled into the wilderness where a place had been prepared for her by God so she could be taken care of for 1,260 days. Jesus is being born to a significant woman in heaven. This raises the possibility that this image of the heavenly birth of Jesus was part of theology. If so, and that theology was shared by Paul, then it helps us in two ways. Firstly, it clarifies that Paul's Galatian statement of born of a woman was born in heaven of a woman. Secondly, it also explains Paul's strange use of words. To introduce somebody as being born of a woman when everybody else was born of a woman is redundant and consequently nobody ever does it. If this was a mythicist pericope, understood by John, Paul and their audience, then not only does it clarify Paul's meaning, but it also explains his use of words and why he used the term genomenos, which means something like created by God, rather than genos, meaning born. As with Paul, we have no overtly historicist comments and a small number of ambiguous pointers. The born of a woman pericope does strengthen the argument that Paul was referring to a spiritual birth of Jesus in Galatians. Overall, I would say that Revelation does favour mythicism, 